Mm. Nothing like a hot cup of coffee on a cool morning. Illy Coffee wrapped up in New York City today. Oh, man. It's Thursday. We are almost through the week. Call it Friday Eve. Don my Hawaiian shirt and get ready for the weekend. Tomorrow is Friday. But today, we're jumping off with our live broadcast this morning, uh, Cup of Cyber. Have you been following along? You probably know on Thursday, we talk about the RMF, the Risk Management Framework. And we're talking specifically about version 2.0, the one that came out a couple Decembers ago. A lot of people still haven't moved into this. And we understand it's it's new. Um, but don't be afraid. There's not a lot of changes. There really aren't. A uh, bunch of new steps, but the new steps are pretty much all tasks that have always been there. Um, following along, you know that this morning we're going to jump in and we're going to talk about the assess step. In the old uh, RMF, this used to be the uh, fourth step or step four. Now we call it the assess step because I guess that makes it easier. So if you want to learn about the assess step, you want to learn about the six, six tasks you have to do in the assess step, then uh, join us this morning for this morning's Cup of Cyber. Well, it is Thursday, so what is the day? What kind of holiday is today? we got to have a holiday every day. Today is actually National Chopstick Day. That cat was not so happy about him getting that, uh, getting that fly with those chopsticks. Let's look at some chopstick etiquette. Uh, one thing is proper improper to use chopsticks. Uh, in some ways, it can be even uh, impolite or insulting. You know, uh, don't stab your chopsticks into your food. Don't put them upright in your food. That's an insult. You know, put them straight down in there, leaving them in there. Um, it is okay to stab a piece of meat or a piece of food with a chopstick and eat it. Don't point at people. Don't point at people with your chopsticks. Uh, don't suck or chew on the ends of your chopsticks. And chopsticks are not drumsticks. So don't do your best impression of a drummer with your chopsticks. So about a quarter of the people on the planet eat food with chopsticks. Uh, been used them for about 5,000 years. Been around a long time. So today, take your food, whatever it is, Chinese food, Asian food, uh, even a hamburger. Try to eat that thing with some chopsticks. So let's jump into it. The assessment step, like we talked about, this used to be step four of the RMF in version one. Um, now it's just the assessment step. We make it easy, and we're going to num every, number everything with an A in front of it instead of uh, a number. So task that used to be A1. Uh, probably now we're going to be, or tasks that used to be 1-1 one, one, or 4-1 one are now going to be A-1, if I can figure out how to talk. Uh, purpose of the assessment step is to determine the controls. If the controls selected for implementation are implemented correctly, operating is intended in producing the desired outcome with respect to meeting the security and privacy requirements for the system and the organization. Really, we're going to take all the stuff the system owner did in the first three steps, and we're going to make sure that those controls that were selected uh, and implemented and documented are done correctly. And we're even going to check the documentation. Is the documentation correct? Uh, when the system owner said they implemented a control a specific way, was it implemented that way? We'll check all that stuff out. Um, so let's dive into it. Let's look at the different tasks within the assessment step. So the first part, this is a new task. Uh, assessor selection. As a task, this is new. Always been there. You've always had to, uh, to select an assessor, and that assessor has to meet certain requirements, right? Uh, an assessor or assessment team is selected to conduct the control assessment. Um, they got to do certain things. They got to know the technology. Um, they've got to be skilled in what they're doing. They got to be technically savvy. They got to be knowledgeable. There's a bunch of things they have to do. And when we dive into the, these tasks, in more depth later, um, we'll really go through and, and put the wrench to them 
take the bolts out and look at what goes into this task. But in this high level level overview, you know, they have to have certain requirements, and so we're going to select them in this task. Um, they have to have the appropriate level of independence um, for for that team. So the team has to be an independent, right? Uh, can't really be someone from the system uh, unless that's determined to be independent. And in the normal RMF and the RMF world, the authorizing official is the person that will determine the level of independence. So they can tell they can tell the assessment team, you know, if you you're a very specific skill set, and the only people that have that skill set are from the product team, from the system team, the AO may say they are independent enough and may read them in. Generally, it's going to be somebody from outside the system that comes in and talk and assesses the system. So first two, two things we have to do in this task, we have to select the team, we have to make sure they're um, determined to be independent. And there's a lot more to that when we talk about this uh, task later on, we'll dig really in, in deep to it. So, gosh, we know, uh, control assessors must be qualified. Change my mind. Um, now we need to build a plan, right? So we've got the assessment team. They're in place. Now they're going to go out and they're going to build the plan. Um, we're going to documentation. Uh, we're going <laughs> to create documentation that's needed to conduct the assessment. Um, is provided to the assessor assessment team. So what information does the assessment team need? They need to know what they're going to be assessing. They need to know how big the system is. They need some information. And that's going to be dependent on each organization. That could be uh, a lot of information, or they could be kind of going in a little bit blind by the assessment team. Um, security and privacy assessment plans are developed and documented. We actually write a plan out. As an assessor, you should be creating a plan. This is the things we're going to do. Here's the controls we're going to assess, and here's how we're going to assess them. And then the security and privacy assessment plans are reviewed and approved to establish the expectations for the control assessment and the level of effort required. So uh, we're going to provide these plans later to the system owner. And that way the system owner knows what to expect when we come on site as the assessor, what documentation they're going to want to see, who they're, we're going to want to interview, all kinds of stuff. So we want to have this plan together. It's formalized, it's formalizing, and it kind of gives us the rules of engagement. It gives us the ability to go in and actually conduct the assessment. It's going to say things like, you know, when we're going to start, when we're going to stop, who who's coming on the assessment team and how are we going to do the assessment as well as what we expect from the system owner. Now we're going to want rights and privileges on the system to conduct the assessment. We're going to want documentation provided. We're going to want a bunch of stuff. So we need a plan. The AO is the one that's going to approve the plan. Uh, the AO or someone in the AO staff. So we want to get this thing together. We want to get it to them. They're going to approve it and then we're going to distribute it. Um, then we actually go in and we kick the tires of the system. We could conduct the control assessment. Right, control assessment are conducted in accordance with the security and privacy assessment plan. Plan we just made, we're going to do the assessment in accordance with that. Um, we want to have opportunities to reuse the assessment results from previous assessments to make risk management process timely and cost effective. Um, if the system owner has assessed the controls as they should have, we'll want to look at those plans. Uh, we we'll want to look at those results, and it's going to make the assessment much easier. If there's been other assessments of the system, we're going to want to see those results as well. This could speed the assessment. That helps the organization. That helps the system owner. That helps the assessment team. That helps everyone. So we want to give the system a good shakedown. We want to make sure that the controls are in place as they're supposed to be. Um, but if we've already looked at some of the controls in a different way, in an audit, a previous assessment, or self-assessment by the system owner, Let's use those. Let's reuse those results and let's reuse those processes that were used. So if they they came up as as one of those groups came up with a way to assess the password link, maybe let's look at how they did it. If it makes sense, let's go ahead and reuse it. Right. So first we make the plan, then we assess the system. Uh, Woody and Buzz are going to jump in and make this thing happen. Assessment report is our fourth task. Uh, security and privacy assessment reports that provide the findings and recommendations are completed. The report is kind of the output. This is the document we're going to provide to the AO that's going to tell the truth about the controls in the system. So we have the system security plan that was built by the system owner. That's going to tell about the system, uh, 
from the system owner's point of view. That's going to go to the AO as part of the assessment package. The assessment report is going to be the independent review of the controls, and that's going to give the kind of the, the truth to the system, from truth about the system to the authorizing official. So the assessor works for the authorizing official to provide them insight into what's going on, right? So we want this report solid, backed up, and it's going to have things in there like what controls were assessed, what were found deficient, and recommendations to what can be fixed. And we'll, again, dive into these later. Uh, remediation actions. If the system owner can fix some things before we go any further, they can fix them and we can retest them while we're on site. Um, if they're giant, big things, we're going to have to fix those later. Um, we're not going to have time to fix everything, but in the remediation action step, we can fix some things that uh, maybe take uh, just a little bit of time, or maybe they're so critical that the system is not going to be able to go forward unless we fix this thing. So maybe it's really important to have logging and monitoring in place, and maybe that system has no logging and monitoring. So it doesn't make sense to go on any further until that's remediated. So this remediation step, we're going to remediate uh, deficiencies uh, in the control implementation, uh, in the system, and in the environment of the systems operating. Um, we're going to update the security and privacy plan to reflect the implementation uh, changes made based on the assessment and subsequent remediation action. So if we said we maybe didn't, we put said we're not implementing logging and monitoring and we had to implement it before we moved on, then that's that's we need to update. We need to update that, right? So we need to go back in our documentation, our SSP or SS, SCTM. We need to update those things to make sure that they reflect what is really going on, right? So remediate findings, you must. You got to remediate those findings, right? Now we're on to the final task of this plan, um, of the step. And again, this is not, this is not new, right? This is new to this step because this used to be in the authorized step. This used to be in the next step, but it never made sense to be over there. Uh, it should have always been in this step, right? So we're going to create what's called a POAM or a plan of action and milestones. Um, for all the deficiencies that remain, if we could not fix them during the remediation step, we have to come up with a plan on how to fix them, right? And this, it can be a detailed document, but it's really, it, it's like going to get your car inspected, right? You go, you go in and they're, they're gonna say, here's 10 things wrong with your car. Um, these things are most critical. Your wheels are gonna fall off if you don't get new lug nuts, right? Or something like that. If it's something critical, it's gonna rise to the top of the poem. Less important things are gonna be the bottom of the poem. But it's going to detail things like what control was found deficient, who is responsible for fixing it, what resources are required, and then milestones along the way. They're going to say, I'm going to fi fix this part of it by this date. I'm going to fix this part of it by this date. And it's going to be totally done by this date. And we're going to have these milestones along the way to see, are we hitting our goals? So a plan of milestones. Uh, detailing remediation plans for unacceptable risks identified in the security and privacy assessment report is developed. And again, this is important to do. We have to create a plan of actions and milestones, right? Uh, you don't you don't need a poem if you don't have any findings. No, that's not true. We have to have a poem, even if we have no findings. Um, that may seem silly, but According to NIST, this is one of the three required documents. So, so we have three documents that are required for our, uh, our authorization packet. That's the system security plan or the SSP. That's the security assessment report that we create in this step uh, or the SAR and the plan of action and milestones, again, that we create in this step. Um, those are the three minimum documents required by NIST, right? Most organizations require you have more stuff, but if we look at it, we got the SSP, tells the story of the system from the system owner's point of view. The SAR, or the Security Assessment Report, tells the story about the controls as they're implemented and as the documentation reflects that implementation. And then the Plan of Action and Milestones tells the AO of the controls that were found deficient. Here's our plan on how we're going to fix them and how long it's going to take. So really, these three documents are the minimum to tell the story of the system and the story of the controls, right? Um, so that that's the tasks in the step. 
and again, we'll have to jump into them more deeply. Um, each task has a lot more to it, and those will be covered later in their own videos. But that kind of wraps up Thursday. Uh, hopefully you've got good plans for the weekend. It's just around the corner. Uh, as always, hit the bell. We'll be notified when new things come out. Comment below. Uh, comment in the video. There is the ability to throw something up in the video, and we'll talk about it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We'd love to see you on the count as we go up. Um, and I guess, you know, that's, that's, that's it for the day. Uh, hopefully you have a nice warm day wherever you're at. Uh, be safe out there, and we will see you tomorrow morning. Thank <laughs> you.